to give you a bit of an overview of tonight's agenda. Um, we're going to give you a project overview, uh, go over the project's timeline, as this project has been ongoing for about a year and a half, uh, give you an idea of the project goals that were established um, through public consultation, uh, review existing conditions. I'm sure everybody's very familiar with the existing conditions, but just to see it from our perspective and also just from a, a road engineering, how everything works together perspective. We'll give you an overview of the public input so far, um, and then we'll present you some alternatives for Barry Street, the Barry Mont, or the Barry Mont Main Street intersection, as well as Main Street. Um, and then some short term projects that are possible, and then next steps. And then, as Mayor Watson mentioned, we'll have uh, questions. So from the RFP that was issued by the city, um, the study will address alternatives to improve north, south, and east, west connectivity for bicycles and pedestrians throughout the downtown. It will include analyzing traffic control techniques at intersections, as well as possible connectivity improvements using adjacent streets, pedestrian crossing locations, and on-road bicycle facilities. So just to let you know, our project area um, is Berry Street between Main Street and the uh, Rec Center, and also Main Street from Memorial Drive to um, the Elm, uh, Spring Street roundabout, essentially. Although everything else is connected, evidently, it's like a spider web, you can't just pull one part of part of it out and then reconnect it. It doesn't work that way, but this is the main focus area. So we're very well aware that everything works together um, and that's part of the kind of puzzle that we've been working on. So in terms of the project timeline, the project was kicked off in January 2018 and now we're down here to 2019. And here we are in the public input portion of the project um, and we've been working on a final report with our existing conditions and the alternatives that we're presenting to you and obviously um, the public input piece. So our project goals, it's to meet the needs of people walking, cycling and driving in Montpelier by four different methods. First we're looking at increasing the mobility of options for all ages and abilities. We're trying to fill the gaps of the existing pedestrian and uh, bicycle network by connecting the bike path to downtown and within itself in downtown. We're trying to identify upgrades and safety to the existing pedestrian circulation networks and improving the efficiency of intersections within the project area to improve the flow, connectivity, and safety of vehicular traffic. So it's really about everybody, all the modes of transportation working together in a more, more effective way, but especially safety and making options available for multimodal transportation. So with our changing demographics, um, young families, uh, seniors, uh, mobility challenges, what have you, uh, let's make sure that there are facilities available so we have options, essentially, in Montpelier. So everybody's probably had a chance to drive around Montpelier at some point in time. And uh, sometimes it can be efficient and flow, and then sometimes there are queues at the high peaks of uh, the hours, usually before school starts or at the end of school during pickup or uh, in, when everybody's trying to get to work in the morning. And then walking in Montpelier can be very pleasant. We have good uh, pedestrian facilities in terms of wide enough sidewalks um, and we have tree canopies in some locations. We have amenities like benches and trash cans and lighting. Not necessarily enough of it, the lighting piece, but um, we do have facilities. And then there are the challenges of walking in Montpelier. Super long crosswalks in some locations, notably Main and School Street, where you're leaving the library and your car is on the other side of the road, or you want to go to the Uncommon Market. And the width of the um, crosswalk is very long and the visibility is challenging. And then, of course, we have the mid-block crosswalks, which, uh, for example, the one near Aubuchon's or near Three Penny, uh, where you're coming out and you're um, next to cars that are parked, so it's hard for you to see um, the oncoming traffic as a pedestrian, and as a driver, you have a hard time seeing pedestrians. So there's challenges for everybody in that, those situations. And then there's the part, the days where you just give up on the crosswalks and you decide to jaywalk uh, willy-nilly anywhere. 
because uh, the desire lines are there. There's a connection on the other side of the street, which is Shaw's, and you're coming from the other building or the bank, and you want to cross the street, and you don't want to have to do the whole three, three crossing situation. And everybody's done it at some point. It just um, causes um, circulation challenges, and it's a safety hazard. And then there's biking in Montpelier. Some people are confident to ride around um, their bikes anywhere in the city, anywhere in any city. I used to be one of those people. I rode in Toronto and Phoenix. I didn't have a problem with it. But then I had kids. And then I, I started being one of these um, individuals who took to the sidewalks, or at least I put my kids on the sidewalk when they're learning to ride a bike in town. And I know this has been a hot topic on Front Porch Forum um, the past couple weeks. And uh, honestly, I understand why people are riding on sidewalks, because I have a fear of the cars. And, and as a motorist, I have a fear of the cyclists. So it's kind of a challenge on both sides. So in terms of the bicycle infrastructure in Montpelier, um, we have what exists. You see the, the darker lines or some kind of facility, whether that's, a, that's Sharrow's, which is the markings on the ground that says motorists are supposed to share the street with cyclists. Or we have um, bicycle paths or shared use path in the, along the river. And then we have what people are writing. Um, the Strider rides are documentations of um, confident riders that ride everywhere. And you can see um, in the next slide that there is a, a disconnect between the facilities that we have and where people are, who are confident riders are riding. Oh, the line, it's just the dark, darker lines? For example, this is Elm, where there's a bike lane, and then you have the bike path, and then various other sharrows and other systems. So in terms of public input, um, we had our first public input engagement um, at Town Meeting Day in 2018, where we tabled um, out, outside the voting area. So we had quite a few people stop by and talk to us about the process. And this was only when we were at existing conditions. So we were only in the point of looking at what's there, what exists, what are the problems, and um, hearing what people thought were the problems from their perspective. And then we also, at the same time, had an online map where people could go in and uh, provide comments via map if they weren't able to meet us on town meeting day. And then we had an alternatives presentation in August last year to give a preliminary information about where we were in the design process and the options that were um, being developed. We did a preliminary presentation to city council in uh, the spring. And then here we are today in July doing another alternatives presentation so that more people can have access to the process and also the, uh, the options that we've developed. So in terms of public input during town meeting day, which was collecting information about what works and what doesn't work in Montpelier. And uh, these are the areas in red um, where there was public input. The red is that doesn't work. So you can see a bit of a concentration there. <laughs> just, just a little bit. And then the areas that work. For example, the newly installed four-way stop at Elm and Spring Street, which everybody seems to appreciate, having been in a good change. And then you have um, the predominantly red Main Street and the predominantly red Berry Street, which ironically is our project area. <laughs> So in terms of hotspots um, during the public input, besides the map, um, we compiled comments and, and then saw what came to the top. And the first thing that came was Barry and Main Street intersection, which won't be surprising to residents of Montpelier. Um, traffic control is needed, uh, whether that's a roundabout or a single, and walking across Main Street feels unsafe with chaotic vehicle traffic and width. And I'd say the same thing from a vehicular perspective. It's kind of playing chicken all the time when you're trying to turn left from Barry Street, and the same when you're trying to get in onto Barry Street. And then um, other comments uh, on Barry Street, the sight lines from driveways, because they're, you're, they're blocked. You're blocked when you're driving, coming out of your driveway um, by the parked cars along the street. 
And then um, there were suggestions of removing parking on one side or the other of Barry Street or converting it to a one-way operation. And then I'll just go a bit quickly for the Main Street portion because um, we're focusing a little bit more on Barry Street tonight. Um, but the Main Street crossing at Langdon Street, um, yielding to pedestrians, especially when you've just finally gotten that green light at Main and State, and then you have to stop again at the pedestrian crosswalk is torture for drivers. It's also torturous for pedestrians because they step out into traffic and sometimes it, you don't know if the car is going to stop or not. Um, and then queued vehicles are blocking the sight lines and also the turning into Langdon Street and other issues that ensue from that. And then State and Main Street intersection um, needs to be made more bicycle friendly. And then the waiting time is long because of the, um, what's it called, Julia? Exclusive the exclusive pedestrian signal. So everybody has to wait their turn and not everybody is that patient. Um, and then uh, the same way if you're a pedestrian, you have to wait through all those cycles for the different um, directions of traffic to go through. It, it can be kind of daunting. And so that's where you get people crossing uh, other places like the, the um, near Three Pennies, using that cross, uh, crosswalk, or um, walk, uh, walking across the crosswalk at East State Street when they shouldn't be. Uh, and then the School Street and Main Street in intersection. Um, it's a very long crosswalk and everybody or the people who provide comments about it also agreed. And there's higher speeds because the street widens at that point. So it feels more like you're ready to press on the gas a little bit more because you have less of the building encroaching onto the street which usually makes people slow down a little bit more and there's less vegetation as well. And then there's angled parking. And then the traffic control is needed um, was the comment and uh, to consider a four-way stop like this Spring and Elm Street. Since that was so successful, it was seen as pos a possibility by the public at school in Maine. So who are we designing bicycle facilities for? Uh, we had some comments in previous public input sessions where uh, confident riders feel like we don't need any additional bicycle bicycling facilities but those are the confident riders down here that um, end up being about 1% of the population. And this, these are general figures from across the nation, but I'd say it's the same in Montpelier. And then, so they can tolerate a lot more stress, which means they can tolerate uh, cars backing up, possibly opening their doors when they're parallel parked. Um, they can tolerate trucks going by them. They're okay, they're in their zone. And then you have the somewhat confident riders who um, uh, are still, they're a bit, um, they have a little bit of an ease when they're uh, riding their bicycles, but they still take it on. And then we have the rest of the population, which is the 60%, ends up being about 60% of the population that won't ride downtown Montpelier. And it's because they won't uh, tolerate the lower stress. The idea of getting hit by a car outweighs the benefit of riding a bicycle. So there are several bicycle infrastructure options that we looked at and that are available to us. Um, there's a shared lane marking, which um, are sharrows, which we have on uh, State Street. We have shoulder bikeways, which are on Elm Street, if you um, pass the bakery. And then there are bike lanes, where there's a stripe line and then the bicycle symbol is there. And bicycles have a dedicated space on the road. However, there are other options. There are buffered bike lanes, which means there's a three f or two to three foot um, protected um, zone between traffic and the bicycle, so that if ever there's debris in the bike lane, which is pretty consistent and often, or a catch basin that you're trying to avoid, you have a bit of space, but also it just gives you that extra buffer reassurance that um, between the two modes of transportation. And that we have on the Barry Montpelier Road. And then the other option is to actually put um, physical barriers in between this bike lane <coughs> and the vehicular traffic, which could be, um, oh, actually, yes. Uh, which could be planters, which could be bollards, which could be um, other uh, physical barriers, which increases the feeling of safety even more and is safer. 
And then um, if you go even further, there is a possibility of having the bike facility elevated from the road, and, but still next to the road, and or shared with um, um, pedestrians. So it's different, different facilities and options. So back to the project. Um, Berry Street, what is, the, what is the focus of Berry Street? It's connecting the existing and the in construction, as everybody has surely seen on the other side of the road, um, the, the shared use path or bike path that's coming. Because you have the path that en will end next to Shaw's, and then you have the path that starts again at the rec center or, and goes towards a co-op, and then there's another piece that's being built towards a golf course but there's nothing in between that. So we need to have that connection for bicycle facilities. And then it's also about improving sight lines when people are leaving their driveways um, because of proximity of the parked cars. Um, so one thing to take in, we took into consideration as we were looking at option and designing possible solutions to, to this um, issue was uh, to remember where the alignment of the bike path ends on next to Shaw's and where it is at the rec center. It's on the south side of, of Berry Street, so just keep that in mind. And then what's the focus of the Berry Street and Main Street intersection? Um, well, we've seen, and I'm sure most people in this room will agree, it's unsafe for all users from pedestrians to cyclists to motorists, just because of the utter confusion that ensues when any, anybody's coming from more than one direction, essentially. <laughs> and then, uh, and then we're, we know that a traffic control is essential at that intersection. The question is what, what it is. Is it a roundabout? Is it traffic singles? Because obviously the stop sign is, is not effective. So the alternatives that we came up with um, were a shared use path, also called a side path because it's next to the road, it's a more of a technical term, with roundabouts or with singles, a buffered two-way bikeway, which means there's a space and something between the bike lane and um, the vehicular traffic, but can be on, is on the road level, and then there's buffered bike lanes. So the existing conditions from a plan perspective, um, we have the in construction shared use path, also known as the bike path, um, and then all the way to where Shaw's is, and then we have the rec center where the path is existing and then connects down. And then so you have this piece that does not have a bicycle facility. It does have sidewalks on both sides, but the sidewalks are also um, close to the parking. So um, walking is not the most pleasant experience on Berry Street, although at least we have sidewalks and they're at a, a good width. So Berry Street, our first option is a shared use path with a mini roundabout. Um, and so here's the potential mini roundabout and uh, it would require a bit of um, right of way in some areas if it were installed, so that means easements, and also the challenges of relocating six cash basins. This comes into more of a cost perspective than, um, and uh, construction, constructability. Um, so you have the shared use path we talked about, and then the proposed on this side uh, and this slide, the shared use path is on the north side, and it also has green buffers, which would allow a little bit of room for um, snow um, deposits during the winter, which I know becomes its own traffic calming measure um, on Berry Street. And then parking is removed on this side to be able to accommodate the shared use path, and then, but parking is retained on this, the southern side. Um, so looking at the roundabout, uh, a mini roundabout, it this one avoids the railroad from cutting through the middle of the roundabout. And I'll, you'll see why I'm saying it's avoiding cutting because there's another option that cuts through the railroad track. Um, and, and so it minimizes the need for easements. Even though we would probably need some, it's not as um, challenging as getting one from the railway. Um, so trans this option is also part of transforming all the intersections uh, along Main Street into roundabouts or mini roundabouts and it results in the most <coughs> improvement in terms of vehicular flow of traffic through the corridor. However, 
Um, if you're looking at it from a pedestrian or a cyclist perspective, it would require three crossings of uh, streets or, or minor roads to be able to connect the two parts of the shared use path or bike path. So you'd be crossing up here. If that becomes a road, that's to be debated. And then you'd be crossing Main Street, and then you'd be crossing Berry Street down here if it remained on the north side, which um, in terms of a mini roundabout or a roundabout would need to be on this, this crossing would need to be on this side because of the railway um, challenge here. So this is a, an example of a section of that road and how it would be um, if that were implemented. So you can see the shared use path here um, and the little buffer where some snow can be deposited. And then our second option for Berry Street is a shared use path with a single. Um, it addresses the challenges of circulation at Main and Berry Street. It, fewer parking streets are impacted and that's because we've, um, we're showing the shared use path on the southern side of Berry Street. And it pr preserves um, the par parking along uh, the northern side, which means the um, senior center. It also means the church and also some, uh, some residences on that side. And in terms of um, benefits, um, because you're, we're adding in a traffic signal, we can have a crosswalk here so that this connection is possible straight down. So you're only crossing Main Street once. And that's what I'm showing here. And it's the same, same section, just the reverse side for Barry Street. And then uh, we have a third option, um, which is a two-way protected bike lane along Barry Street, um, which is shown on the southern side here. And um, it's a combination of minimums, which means it um, does not reduce the amount of parking that's taken away, and it doesn't necessarily address some of the traffic conflicts. Um, and it, but the thing is, it introduces a new type of facility. So rather than be removed from the traffic, um, completely by being at the same level as a sidewalk, it's actually on the road, and then they're two direct, two, it's two directional for the bicycle lane. Um, and then to be able to install this along Berry Street, we'd have to um, reduce the width of the travel lanes on Berry Street, which could help slow down traffic, but may also be more challenging to navigate. But this is the lowest cost option. So this is what the section would look like if you were on the road walking your dog. Um, so this is the protected piece and then you can see the bicycle facilities at grade with the cars. So those are the three Barry Street options. Um, so we showed um, the shared use path with a roundabout, the shared use path with a single, two-way protected bike lanes, which was the last one, and when we were um, developing the alternatives, we also had a fourth option, which was one-way protected bike lanes. However, that would mean removing parking on both sides of Barry Street. So you can imagine why we didn't keep going that way. It was the safest design, however, from a bicycle perspective. But um, in order to preserve some parking, we did not explore that further. Now in terms of Main Street, uh, the focus is addressing safety, improving connectivity and circulation for all users, and determining the best um, traffic control at all the intersections. And as well as, as I've mentioned before, the visibility of crossing at uh, some of the crosswalks, or most of the crosswalks. Um, so we're taking into consideration queuing during peak times and the absence, complete absence of bicycle facilities on Main Street. So the Main Street, State Street intersection, um, the focus is pedestrian safety and improving the level of um, service, which means how many cars can get through the intersection and everybody can circulate in a certain amount of time, right? And then we're taking into consideration that the intersection is not um, square, it's a skew. So it's, it's a chal challenging intersection to modify, especially because our building stock is historic, so we're not going to be suggesting removing buildings to go back. And the Main Street and St 
School Street intersection, the focus is on pedestrian safety and increasing the visibility of oncoming traffic and all, for all modes of transportation. So one thing to take into consideration when thinking about this intersection is that um, per um, studies, it meets traffic signal warrant, but does not meet an all, always stop warrant, which means uh, stop signs would not work at the intersection, mainly because Main Street has way more traffic than School Street. So it would just make everybody go slower on Main and that would just cause some uproar. And also, um, it does meet traffic signal warrants because of the volume of traffic and, and the, um, the numbers of pedestrians that cross the street. In terms of the Langdon Street crosswalk, uh, uh, everybody knows tra crossing through queued traffic can be kind of treacherous. And then uh, the queued vehicles also obscure the, ve the pedestrians trying to cross. And then uh, you're blocking traffic all the time is how it feels like, I think, at that, that point. So in terms of the Main Street alternatives, we looked at singles with bike lanes, uh, roundabouts with bike lanes, and a hybrid of roundabout and singles. That means a combination of some uh, intersections would have roundabouts, others would get traffic singles if they don't already have them. And then the fourth option was developed during a different study, which was called uh, Greening America's Capitals, and um, proposed a bikeway on Elm Street and did not have any bike facilities along Main Street at all. So I'm going to go through those. So this is the existing conditions. Everyone's familiar with them, I'm certain. Um, this being School Street intersection and State Street intersection. And this is where the section is down here. So the first option, singles with bike lanes, is a, it's an opportunity to add raised pedestrian crossings at Main and State here. New crosswalk on the south leg of, of Main, sorry, Main and Barry. Thank you, Julia. And then the Langdon Street crosswalk is moved 80 feet north to align with Hazen Place. So there would be more space for cars to uh, get into that position on Main Street when you're traveling north. Um, and then reduce the number of the, the stopping, stop and go kind of situation. Um, and then at uh, Barry and Ma Main Street, we're looking at a new single and a new single at School and Main. So this is what the cross section would look like um, with bike lanes on, at grade on one side. One is protected, as you can see here, and one is not. That's just due to space constraints. And then the second option is looking at uh, roundabouts with protected lanes. So you can see there's roundabouts at every intersection. And um, we're removing, because there is roundabouts, you can remove the left lane, so there's more space in terms of the um, width of the road to work with, so you can add the protected bike lane. And then there's an idea of a raised pedestrian crossing at Langdon Street, which continues on to pedest becoming a pedestrian street. And then, um, but the, cha the challenge, oh, here's the benefit, one of the main benefits of this option. It reduces the length of crosswalks because you have the little islands in the roundabout where you can stop and then cross the next section. The challenge is with a roundabout um, at East or at State Street and Main Street is you cannot have traffic from East State Street join the roundabout. So anybody who would be coming down East State Street would be obligated to turn right onto Main Street and then down Langdon Street and then come back if they were on their way to State Street. Otherwise, they would go on to Cedar if they knew ahead, I would say, <laughs> and then on to School Street and then back if they wanted to go on to Main Street, which if anybody's been down Cedar Street when it's school pickup, no. you don't want to be doing that. <laughs> but it would also... Well, and these are what, what we anticipate the traffic flow would, what would happen in this area, um, but it's just good to an know what to, um, what to anticipate in, in that design. So this would be the section um, with the round roundabouts with protected bike lanes. So you can see there's a raised planter or other structure in between the bike lane on both sides of the road. 
because again, by removing that left turn lane, we have more space to work with in terms of bicycle facilities. And we're retaining parking on both sides. A third option that we looked at was a hybrid, so a combination of roundabouts in some areas and then uh, traffic signals in others. Uh, for example, uh, we have a mini roundabout at Main and State, and we have one at Main and uh, School Street. And then the signal as it is remains on Main and uh, State Street. Or, sorry, that was School Street, State Street. Um, for Main Street, there's also the crosswalk is moved back 30 feet, which would um, hopefully have some impact on this, the use of this crosswalk. And then it's a combination of bike lanes and buffer bike lanes because of the, how much um, space we have to work with the street because we do have left turning lanes on main, from main to state. This option retains the most parking. And this is uh, two cross sections of the potential in different areas. So you have bike lanes that are protected in some, are some areas of the road and then others, there's a protected bike lane and then one that's not. In terms of the Langdon Street crosswalk, some options to consider is that, well, evidently there's a strong desire line between city center and the Main Street um, retail block. Um, so removing uh, a crossing and then, or adding one closer to here would be one option in terms of the third um, proposal. Um, adding a raised crosswalk at Langdon Street here, which was also in one of them, and then relocate the crosswalk further away at, from the signal to haze in place, which would give more cars the chance to get through the light before they have to stop for pedestrian, um, which may reduce some frustration. And then the fourth option, which is greening Ameri based on greening America's capital, which was work that was done prior to us, um, looked at adding roundabouts um, at State and Main, and then a roundabout at uh, Main and Berry Street. This is what I was talking about earlier, where the railway would cross through the roundabout, which would be very challenging. Um, and then here we have a roundabout at State and Main, which I discussed um, would make it impossible for this leg to join the roundabout, so you'd have to do the detour. Yes. Um, and in, in this proposal, there were no bicycle facilities uh, provided at all on Main Street. There was a possibility of uh, by bicycle facilities on Elm Street. Um, so that's the section. So we briefly discussed the roundabout at Main and State, which would provide, prohibit the left turning. Um, as you can see, there would be a, one of those islands resting for cross crossing, and then you'd have to turn left. And that's that again, I'm sorry, I'm repeating myself. Um, so it would increase volumes of traffic on Langdon Street and then left turns onto State Street, which you know can be difficult from Elm already. And then turning right onto Main Street would be another option besides Cedar. And then, so part of this option, as I mentioned, would be having a bike route along Elm Street. So Elm Street would become one way from School Street to State Street. Um, and then um, on-street parking would be removed from one side of the road to be able to accommodate um, bicycle facilities and the one-way situation. So in this, in, for this example of Elm Street, um, the level of service impact would be as illustrated. So you have traffic coming both ways from school to court and then one way this way. So a lot of, if you were going to, to try and find your way from Elm Street, you'd be going down to Main, onto Langdon, then onto Elm Street, or going down to the roundabout, which would add more traffic onto Main Street. So here are some pros and cons of the Main Street options, uh, the singles, uh, the roundabouts, hybrid, and the Greening America's capital. Um, in terms of the singles, all singles throughout the corridor, uh, it has the least amount of change to the curb lines of the road, which means it's uh, less cost. And, uh, but to add in the bicycle facilities would have a, a greater reduction of parking. And then there's no, not necessarily an improvement to the traffic flow. And then there are more lanes to cross as a pedestrian at Barry if we did the uh, triangular 
uh, option. <laughs> in terms of the roundabout, it has the most improvement to vehicular traffic flow. It preserves more parking, um, and it reduces the lanes for pedestrians crossing Main onto Bay Barry. But it's um, more expensive. There are maybe um, some impacts to the right of way in terms of needing an easement, <coughs> which adds to the cost. And then there's an inconvenient diversion of traffic if you're doing the roundabout at Main and State Street. And then uh, bicycles would have to mix with pedestrians or with traffic at roundabouts, which is an important thing to note. Because, because we have a compact downtown, there's not enough room to add in a bicycle lane going around the roundabout, which would be an option in a place where you got to start from scratch. So technically, a bicyclist would either have to get on the sidewalk at that point of the roundabout and mix with pedestrians, or would have to mix with the traffic, which can be challenging. And then you're not meeting necessarily the 60% who would bike through downtown. And then we have the hybrid, which was a mix of singles and roundabouts, mini roundabouts. Um, it has a more affordable cost than doing roundabouts throughout. Uh, it reduces lanes for uh, pedestrians crossing and preserves some parking. Um, but there might be some peak hour traffic backups through Barry and Main roundabout, or if there wasn't a roundabout, it would also um, not necessarily improve the traffic flow. And then the Greening America's Capital um, pros, it preserves the most parking because there aren't any bicycle facilities along Main. And um, it makes, uh, you could have a lot more features along Main Street because you could address um, street furnishings and that kind of thing. But it also has a high cost. As I mentioned, there's no bicycle facilities along Main. It, there are inconvenient di diversions either on Elm Street because of the one-way bicycle facility, uh, one-way street, I should say, and then uh, the diversion from East State and Main Street. So in terms of the parking, here's a quick summary of the different, different options. We're here for existing, no bicycle facilities. The Green America's capital uh, in this on Main, uh, Main Street, uh, no, sorry, total, total parking. Um, no bicycle facilities on Main Street. And then the M1, which was the traffic signals, M2, which was roundabouts, and then three, which was a mix of the two. And this just illustrates the space dedicated to vehicles in general downtown. So roundabouts versus singles has been an uh, ongoing conversation within um, the steering committee and the town and us. And there are concerns on both sides for either or option. But keep in mind that the whole system works together. Like I mentioned, it's like a spider web. You can't just think of one roundabout or one intersection on its own. It really affects everything else. It's like a domino. So some of our concerns about roundabouts is that uh, you'd have to, as I mentioned, um, either share traffic with pedestrians or with traffic when you get to a roundabout. Um, the traffic diversions that we've talked about, um, the encroachment onto the railroad, whether that's a mini roundabout cutting one of the lake, the railroad cutting one of the lakes of the roundabout, or going straight through in the Greening America's capital option. Um, the queues from signals in the hybrid could uh, lock up the, the roundabout. And then the roundabout requires walkers to divert from a straight path. So when you're coming, to, you're approaching a road, usually the crosswalk hopefully is in line with the other side of the road. But with roundabouts, because of the way um, it works, they ha you would kind of go off your intended path. And uh, roundabouts are known to be challenging for individuals who are visually impaired or have um, challenges um, with visibility because you don't have the squeaking, you don't have the, everybody is stopping at some point so that there could be that safe crossing. So it's something to consider um, when thinking of roundabouts. And then in terms of signals, um, there's a, been a conversation about adaptive signal controls, which means all the signals would talk to each other so that when there's a higher peak, um, more cars could flow through. Um, but of course, as someone mentioned at the last uh, public input session, technology only works when it works. So there's always that. And then um, pedestrian um, phases, they overall did just increase everybody's wait time. So it's one thing to think about. So why I think about protected bike lanes, um, their best practices for providing low stress options for people who might not necessarily bike in a downtown situation. And it looks 
a response to the goals of the Montpelier Motion Report, which was also done before our time, and the Complete Streets Plan. Um, it, it takes advantage of uh, people who bring, it brings in people on bikes uh, to enjoy downtown, but also connect them also to the central Vermont bike path, which um, is getting longer and longer every day, which is awesome. Um, what do they look like? Um, they're, when they're raised, uh, they are next to the sidewalk. Usually the furnishings, also called trees or benches, are in between the two. <laughs> And so I, I know a lot of people have fear that if it's at the same level that we're, you know, nobody will know what their place is, but usually there's a different pavement also utilized. So it's evident where pedestrians should be and cyclists should be. And then it also, you, at the same time of installing something like this, you could do um, bump outs or curb extensions so that people crossing could be more visible when they're, before they step out into traffic. So in terms of um, prote the protected bike lanes, uh, sidewalk widths remain the same or they're widened in some cases, as you can see comparing the sections. We're not talking about taking away um, bicycle or pedestrian facilities or encroaching on them. We're just trying to ameliorate another facility. So in terms of short-term projects in, um, oops, in our project area, um, restriping Main and Berry Streets within the existing curves to provide bicycle lanes would be one first step of something that could be done. Um, and then building curb extensions at all the um, crosswalks that are problematic currently um, would be another step that could be done in the short term, even if it's just with um, uh, temporary bulb outs, which is being done in Bethel right now, uh, the second year in a row that they've done that, kind of testing it out and filling it out and getting a sense and getting feedback from people. And then just so you know, there's a lot of push these days for a rapid implementation strategy, which means trying something in the short term and for less money so that you can test it, get people's feedback again, and uh, get some momentum going. So these are other examples of things that have been done, a demonstration project, a pop-up bike lane uh, for a weekend or a month. And then um, you have other curb extensions here. You see just used with paint and some box planters. Some interim designs just to try things out with paint again and then or, or moving towards a permanent installation. And then quick build has been happening a lot in Burlington and, and other places close by or further away in Brazil. Um, for example, there's a quick build with um, a delineator posts here of a bike lane in Burlington and also that kind of curb extension with paint on the ground. So it's, this is at grade with the road. It's just paint and then some um, higher planters, very visible. And then here, um, a mini roundabout in Sao Paulo uh, Brazil to try it out with paint, just with paint. So short-term projects, I mentioned some of that, and then um, I think um, the mini roundabout option at school and main would be another idea for rapid implementation, like seeing the idea in Sao Paulo, Brazil, trying it out with paint. So just for the short-term cost estimates, um, this is what we're looking at for those kinds of quick ideas, quick build. So that's kind of an overview of all the alternatives. And our next step is next week, I'll be repeating myself, at in Kellogg Hubbard Library. So if you missed any parts, um, you're more than welcome to come back or send your neighbors. And then we'll have a final presentation to city council, hopefully before the fall and then a final report uh, submitted at the same time. Two more. Sure. All right. Thank you. The lights. Okay, so um, first uh, we're gonna start with some just clarifying questions. Um, what information could you use repeated or clarified or whatnot? So um, I'm gonna stand over here um, so that you can answer yes. questions. Um, so I, I have a real quick one. What's a catch basin? Oh, sorry. It's like a manhole or a sewer uh, box. Great. Yes, a grate, essentially. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Um, I think you mentioned uh, raised crosswalks. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering if that, in effect, is a speed bump. 
Well, it doesn't have the same impact as a speed bump in terms of being like doo -doo. But it's, it is a raised surface that's longer or wider than a speed bump. Okay. So it is definitely to slow down traffic. Yeah, okay. traffic control. Yeah. Did you put some in the meadow? Because I know it's <laughs> yeah. not I'm on Terra Street. I mean, it's nice in the meadow that on intersections it does look a little raised. Well, uh, the meadows are beyond our project area, but yeah. it's definitely something to right. consider. But that's an example. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it does yeah, exist in the meadow? Uh, right here. Yeah. Okay. I just want to. I'm not saying that these are good or not, but I'm just making a statement. Three things. One, in Indiana, I believe you had four-way stops, and everybody learned, and everybody did. Um, I mean, we were only there for four years. Within less than a month, we understood because we came from New York City and we didn't drive, but then we go um, and learned to do it, and everybody did. Mm -hmm. Number one. Number two, in Wisconsin, in just outside of Milwaukee, any kids from 12 or under could ride their bikes on the sidewalk. If you were over 12, you had to ride in the street. So kids had to be taught that, you know, how you had a street riding. Number three, it's very difficult to see around the buses when they're stopped in front of yeah. Shaw's. Right. And if you're trying to come out, you certainly can't see anything. If you're going past the bus, you could just go into the other lane. So, okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes, um, thank Have you considered putting education into the mix of this? Um, as a cyclist who doesn't own a car and hasn't since 2003 and drove around four bigger cities than Montpelier for years, um, the, the education that I gave myself or that other people gave me in defensive cycling has made me feel very safe. So when I heard about the need, you know, the discussion of, of the Main Street portion of this, I asked myself why because it feels very safe for me to navigate that. Yeah, it's slower, you know, but I don't mind that. But it's such a short stretch, and if you have good defensive riding skills, then that is what you, what helps. Not, you know, so is there, does that come up like this? A citywide educational file program, also some DMVs, I don't know if this has happened in Vermont or not, but in other states then DMVs have required to get a license or to renew your license that you have to uh, study bike safety uh, for car, you know, driving. And those two things, I know that's out of the purview of the city council, but those two things I think should be in the mix here somewhere. I think I can take this one. Sure. Um, I, I don't think that has been a part of your study, the education. No. Okay. So, um, but I'm really glad that you brought that up. Um, and I think it needs to be a part of the mix. And in fact, I was actually just talking with uh, City Councilor Bates uh, earlier today about the need for some education, uh, particularly around uh, for both vehicles and uh, bicyclists. Uh, how to navigate the, the city with each other, uh, and that we might en enlist the help of some other local organizations to do that. Yeah. So, but thank you for bringing that up. That's a really good point. Yeah. Do you know the League of American Bicyclists uh, has programs for that that they offer around the country where people will come out and yeah. offer that? Cool. Well, let's talk after. That's great. Super. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Back there. Yeah. Then here. Yeah. So I'm just concerned about uh, removing a parking on Berry Street right near the intersection of Barry Main and how that will ripple up Barry Street. So it seems to me the upper part by Kiss May, like during the winter months, especially yeah, with really. dual side parking, if you live up there, it is a nightmare. <laughs> and people don't think it's two ways, people's mirrors are getting knocked off, people don't know how to drive, yeah. like aren't used to that narrower street. And it's, I think the problem with Barry Street goes out much further up than the study area, especially with the new paving, people are coming down their street faster. And I mean, I guess we'll all see how that works this winter, um, but it's always a relief when spring comes around and someone who lives there that you're not risking your life. Fair enough, thank you. Yeah, I was just saying, education is always a good idea, but Montpelier is like 50% tourists. Mm -hmm. So you can't educate them. Mm -hmm. And so you really have to build that into the, 
yeah. into the oh, whole so mix true. of, they don't know. Sure. <laughs> uh, John and then here, yeah, good. Uh, you've done a great job of laying out possibilities. I think we all need to recognize that nobody's going to be happy in the end. <laughs> and something's going to happen. And we all have a voice in it now uh, versus when it's done. And, you know, we, we, we can adapt to changes. That said, uh, I would love to see the city also bump up sooner than later a traffic study of, of Berry Street. Because I think that's an element that's missing there and would help uh, would help define what kind of traffic, which directions, you know, how far it goes, all those sorts of questions that need to be answered uh, to really get the best solution at that intersection. Uh, yeah. Oh, and then, uh, yeah. Uh, first, a comment. I, I live up on College Hill, and uh, when I'm biking, I avoid state and Maine. It just, I won't go there. It's, it's terrible. It's unstable to stop when you're stopping, when you're starting up and all that. I go down Cedar and across school, a port, I just stay out of the center of town altogether. Just coming. I have a question though. Um, was there any consideration given, I'm not sure who I'm supposed to be addressing. It's okay. Um, was there any consideration given to routing bicycle traffic um, onto uh, Stonecutter's Way instead of going all the way down Berry Street. I didn't see that address. Now, I know it's difficult. I carry my bike across the railroad tracks and go down past Sarducci's. But um, any consideration to that, would that simplify things or make them hard? We did look at that at the begin very beginning, but because of the railway tracks and the right of way of the railway um, and the proximity of the buildings to the actual railway, there isn't space in the beginning for that option to get there. To to get there, right? And then once and then there are challenges with getting an easement from the railway to do that, but mainly the space just doesn't allow it from that perspective. But yes, that was definitely one thing um, we looked at from the very beginning. Uh, and, oh, sorry. Yeah. Any consideration given to bridges, pedestrian or bicycle bridges over any of the roads? We did not look at bridges. It's usually cost prohibitive. Oh, really? Okay, uh, Ron. Yeah, I have two questions. Number one, for me as a cyclist, the roundabouts are very confusing because you don't know at which intersection the cars that are right behind you will cross. There is one exception, and that's between River Street just before you get onto the Barry Montpelier Road where they have crossings, designated crossings for bicyclists. So that's something that, in my opinion, you might keep in mind. The other thing is that you pass so quickly for me uh, the last um, picture of the, the, the costs. I wonder if you could go back there. Oh. I only saw could perceive one or see one. Clearly. Oh yes, it's just for the short-term options in terms of quick bill. Better. Yes. That I understood. Oh so, yes. Sorry. So Barry Street for protected bike lanes, just to put paint on the ground, essentially, is about fifty thousand dollars. These are high high level estimates. And then the school Main Street intersection of doing a similar paint um, for a mini roundabout with quick build materials is about $30,000. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Uh, in the M3 hybrid option, does it make a material difference if you consider a roundabout at Maynard Memorial Drive in addition to the other roundabouts there? Because this option had that as a signal still. What if that were also roundabout, like in the M2 option? Can I just say that the main state intersection is like a real pinch point for getting through downtown? So like sometimes traffic backs up even through Main and Memorial. So mm -hmm. the traffic control there is not necessarily dictating what's happening downtown. Right, but I mean, does it make a, does it affect the uh, operation of Main and Barry if Main and Memorial is also a roundabout? Or is there any reason not to have that around about uh, in that option? Yeah. The biggest reason works to me to not Would you stand up, please? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Come here, Julia. You, you can could also here. use the mic. Okay. Uh, well, the biggest reason at Main Memorial is the constructability. Like, that's one of the highest volume 
highest traffic volume areas in all of Montpelier. It'll be a big construction project. Um, it's a really expensive, a lot of truck traffic. Um, and I think the biggest traffic congestion piece at Main and Barry is really northbound. Um, so it's having to stop at State and Main after going through Main and Barry and Main and Memorial. Uh, anyway, my question is because in the in the roundabout option you had all of them as roundabouts, including the main and memorial. Yeah. But in the hybrid, you left main and memorial as a signal, and I was wondering what the rationale was that a cost rationale or something else to leave well, that as a signal in that option. Yeah, I mean, I think it's cost and flow of traffic. Yeah. Another option. I mean, that's not off the table, but we just figured because of the challenges. Um, that My understanding is that intersection is nearly non-functional already. Yeah. That the only possible improvement is a roundabout. Yeah. Yeah. Which one are you? Where? Which one? Memorial. Memorial. Well, and, and, the only and there was a study previously done of roundabouts. Yeah, I've seen that from Twitter. That's the fastest one. It's the city time. Time, folks. Yeah, um, right. So, if you have a if you have a thought, uh, feel free to raise it. Who's got a thought? Uh, uh, so I'm here first. Okay, I've got a couple of comments. First of all, with the bump outs, I had a very bad experience one night going past the uh, middle school where you've got that parking area mm -hmm. which has got two bump outs. Mm -hmm. Well, they're not painted, and I got I hit the one coming down into town, and. Uh, that wasn't particularly good. That's number one. Um, so if you're going to have bump outs, you're going to have to have something up there that's visible to motorists, particularly when the town has low parking or snow or anything like that. Uh, the question of traffic signals. Uh, if you're going to put a traffic signal at the end of Barry Street, I would strongly recommend that it was controlled by the same controller that runs uh, State and Maine. That's probably possible to do. Uh, and uh, it would uh, eliminate the problems of the two signals getting out of sync with each other. The third item is uh, St. Main. Uh, we're talking about roundabouts. What if you made an oval there instead of a roundabout? And that way, uh, State Street, East State Street, could still become yeah. part of that uh, that the, traffic pattern. In the beginning of our study, we really looked at every option, like a kind of peanut shape, an oval, and a big issue with that is there's a lot of people that turn left onto State Street from Main Street, mm -hmm. so that turn would be really difficult and pretty much impossible for trucks because they would be doing the oval and the, you know. Well, it would have the same, presumably yeah. have the same radius as the circle. No, no, no. 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 Well, no, you just make the, the, the round ends of the oval the same size as, as the uh, radius of the circle. Maybe like kind of a U-turn, you know, yeah, instead of turning it. Yeah, but so is, it, so is a, a circle, basically. Mm. You'd have to see it on paper, it wouldn't work. We did look at it. <laughs> We can we can continue that. Uh, yeah. The other thing is your, your route from East State Street into either State Street or uh, left onto uh, Main Street, uh, funneling all that traffic through the end of uh, Elm Street would be a total disaster mm -hmm. because that's just about as busy as Main Street is, and you're talking asking people to make either a left turn on a very backed up section of El uh, Elm Street mm -hmm. with nothing but a stop sign there. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's, speaking of visibility, that's terrible on that corner. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right, are there comments from people who haven't gotten to speak yet? Uh, let's see, there and then there. So we'll just go in order. So uh, here and then there. And then there. Okay. okay, great, super. So I am very much in favor of the roundabout at Barry and Maine. I'm not so sure about the rest. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I'm not in favor of the roundabouts. Uh, number one, you'll take all the parking out right in front of our businesses all up and down the street. It's a laundry mat. People have to carry their laundry in. So being someone that pays taxes for that space, 
you probably would like us to stay open versus closing our doors. Because if they can't carry their laundry to us, we are might as well close our doors. It's hard to ask, but I'll keep you there. Thank you. <laughs> the, it seems like the stop signals would work great if you sync them up, but also if you sync them up with the crosswalks. Having lived in Montpelier my whole life, it made no sense to make it through a light just to stop when a pedestrian just feels like they want to cross the road. Cities all usually sync up their crosswalks. So when everything's green, everybody stops. When everything's red, everybody goes. I think that would flow your traffic through from the bridge all the way to the end to the roundabout. You wouldn't need to do the roundabouts. It just has to be synced. And people can wait. Thank you. Um, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Because yeah, we've got a couple comments about syncing traffic controllers and traffic signals. The city is looking at with the all signal option, the adaptive signal control that was mentioned. And really, what that is is each signal, each intersection, talks to each other, and it anticipates what's going to happen down the line. So it'll say, "Boy, I've got uh, X amount of cars coming in this direction." It talks that next signal down and says, "Okay, well, I'm gonna let these people go." They get to the and really we, what we've seen is reduced stops and delays by about thirty percent on similar corridors. So that is part of the all signal option. But is that control of crosswalks as well? Yes. Okay, and uh, yeah. just so you can introduce yourself. Oh, sorry, little... Corey Line with the public works. Great, okay, super. Can, can Corey um, add to that? Sorry about the adaptive lights. Would you explain yeah. more about how the flow changes though? Instead of being always the green, oh, oh, yeah. So there is some some training for uh, people who use the intersection. So uh, right now we we are stopped at an intersection and we know they're going to go and then we know they're going to go and then I'm going to go. It does not work like that. It's it can go. They're going to go. Then I'm going to go and then they're going to go. So people have to pay attention at those types of intersections. Thank you. Um, just because I called them some people, we go Eve and then uh, Peter and then over here. Oh, and then, and then here. That's great. Um, so I have um, a concern about the conversion of the, of the of the roundabout at East Dave Street and Main Street, and I I think it's a really bad idea to have a roundabout there that would mean you can't turn left because people who live up the hill will absolutely know to do the um, version that would go onto School Street, and that would be so bad and dangerous for kids. And then I think in that same version with the roundabout and the rerouting of cars that in order to get over to Elm Street, you have to go on Langham Street, but then you also had another version that, that would might Langham Street a pedestrian way at some point, so that precludes it. So I think that roundabout at Maine and State have so many problems, it just shouldn't be a consideration anymore. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I got a couple of questions, I'll, I'll start with a few. Um, actually, comments too. So, Main and State, the signals, there's no bike lights crossing. So, the bikes cross the cars. Technically? Te technically, at this point. I mean, we're, we're not there at that point of detail okay. yet, but that's always a possibility. I also want to mention that the bike light is a traffic lights don't change if there's a bike waiting in front of the red light. Yeah. And that's something you should address. Yeah. Then if there's a car behind you, the car the light will right. turn green. Um, I think the biggest issue with the roundabout on Mary and Main is that we put the bike path on the north, which has just more crossings and is unsafe. Uh, and I think for that reason alone, um, it's not a good option. Um, and then a question, I wonder if you looked into making some section of Mary Street a long way to reduce the road traffic. Yeah, we did. And the, you know, the impacts of you know, like we're talking about not being able to turn left at State and Maine. Having Barry Street one way, like the circulation impacts for traffic is even worse. Because um, whichever direction it goes, you're really limiting access for neighborhoods and into downtown and out of downtown. Affecting the level of service, essentially. Yeah. 
Make it worse. Uh, over here, yeah. Um, my question was sort of leads to that about the left hand turn from me to be on Mary Street. Um, and you know, where where Main Street and East State Street are, you can turn left onto East State Street and there's no signal for turning left. So would a signal system mm -hmm. at May and Barry involve a left hand yeah, signal? So because I find that to be those two places to be two of the most dangerous places. Yeah. Um, like turning onto Barry Street, I've been almost hit several times by people yes. in the, uh, the lane next to me also turning onto Barry Street or oncoming traffic right. and that mm -hmm. dynamic. So Yes. Yeah, or being blocked and not being able to turn. So, mm -hmm. with the signal system, does that include the left hand? Yeah, there. Well, I mean, like Sophie said, we're not at that level of detail, yeah. but definitely for b both lefts, uh, off of Berry Street and onto Berry Street, I would yeah. imagine there'd be like a protected phase where only right. people turning left are going. And I believe we looked at a left-hand turn at Main and State when you're going south instead of the right-hand turn lane, which. Um, mm -hmm. Oh. Yes, so that if you're coming from Elm Street um, onto, on Main towards State Street and you want to turn onto East State, maybe changing that to left-hand turn rather than... Because um, right now it's on the right. It's, it's a right-hand right turn, Street. yes. And, yeah, right. oh, I'm sorry, I skipped you. Yeah, yeah, right here and then there. Okay. Um, I really do like the idea of signals at intersections instead of traffic circles, largely because of what happens at night and lower visibility. I mean, I think one of the things mm. to keep in mind is aging drivers who don't see as well at night but are still sure. out there, yep. and pedestrians like me who can't see them. Mm. So a traffic light, people understand, even if they're from elsewhere, and it, it means that traffic stops. Right. So I, I feel much safer. I don't cross at Berry Street and Main at night. I walk to State Street because my motto is better safe than flat. <laughs> <laughs> I just you know I just think that messing with traffic circles is very cool during the daytime, but I won't do them at night. Because I'm really vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. Good point. Thank you. Uh, oh, here, here. Uh, I was in, in the middle of a raging incident the other day at the lights of uh, where you come down Northfield Street at, on Memorial Drive. And what happens is that when the light turns green for those who are traveling and going into Maine, there's a red light for people traveling east and west, but those people who want to take a right-hand turn onto Main Street just keep going, yep. which holds, which means that those who want to get into Main yeah. Street from Northfield Street can't get in. So oh, that's it mm -hmm. just holds mm -hmm. up traffic yeah. everywhere. And then people start, I mean, the other night I thought, oh my God, what have I gotten myself into? <laughs> and you know, thankfully, nobody got hurt, but it could have turned into, mm -hmm. if somebody was really angry, it could have turned into something ugly. Right. And I guess I just would like to see something done there where I know mm -hmm. you want to turn right when it's a when you have a red, red light. light, but really it's our turn to go. Mm -hmm. So I don't know mm -hmm. what we do with something like that. No, 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 no. So before I call on people for a second time, is there anyone who hasn't spoken yet that would like to? Yeah. Um. So I have a motto too, um, mm -hmm. and mine is uh, drivers drive and pedestrians shop. So I really love our downtown to drive. So the more we can do to make it easy and safe for pedestrians, the better. Um, so I just, and I was wondering about the laundromat, how that, those plans would impact on the laundromat and in terms of people being able to get out of their cars and carry their stuff, because that's a drag. So um, I just made me wonder, I saw a mini roundabout in Middlebury, but I really don't know the difference between a, a roundabout and a mini roundabout. And I love this idea of maybe a paint thing just to try it to see, but is there enough room there? And all those questions. So there is enough room for a mini roundabout, and the difference between a roundabout and a mini roundabout is that the center 
island is totally mountable in a mini roundabout, so like a big truck could just drive straight over it okay. or a bus. Because the idea is eventually they're going to need to get to Obershans, the big trucks that yes. need to get to the back of Obershans. Right, right, right. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like, you know, the uh, roundabout at um, Elm Street and, or Spring Street and uh, Main Street has a, a, a part of a yes. multiple piece where the trucks yeah, go over? Yeah. That, that well, idea. There were so many people that had issues with that. And, <laughs> and now it's yeah, like, I love it. I ride my bike through it. And it's, um, you know, the traffic flows and it's safe and... I, I'm sorry you don't like them, Ron, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> it's important that, to know that the traffic volumes on Spring and Upper Main Street are a lot lower. Right, for sure. So, yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 Anyone else who hasn't spoken yet? Okay, here, yeah, go ahead. Um, I just wondered, you have been talking about a, a quick fix with you putting in a mini roundabout at school in Maine, and uh, I'm just concerned about that particular option, uh, wouldn't, wouldn't traffic lights just be better? Um, it's so small there, and I, I go to church on that corner, and mm -hmm. I, yeah. you know, with the library and, and the bank and everything, I just don't see how you'd have room. It definitely fits. There's, the pavement's actually really wide, because there's a turning lane and then the angled parking, so it's a lot of pavement width, um, but in terms and of... And I have another question. Enough. As someone with a disability who has a handicapped plate, I, I hope you don't remove all the parking on Main Street. No. Uh, we're not because we need either. to have turn some of that parking no. into handicap accessible Absolutely. parking. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's not the intent to remove all the parking, and especially um, accessible so parking. Okay. Uh, all right, so a uh, number of folks have a, an, oh, let's go, go ahead, and then, and then we'll get to second comments. I was going to be quiet, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I like the hybrid, and the things that I really liked about it, I like that uh, parking on one side of Berry Street, I really like the bike paths connecting along there, I like the signal on Berry and Maine, I like the signal on school in Maine. I like getting rid of that cross mark on Langdon Street, which really follows everything up. Because if I get the, even I, when I get the big intersection of Maine Street, if I miss the light, I run over there and then I cross and stop. Which is too bad. And I don't like, I don't like putting more traffic on Langdon Street. And I don't like the roundabout on the state. So anyway, I like the hunt. Uh, so I'm going to take some second comments from folks and then see if there's any um, uh, additional comments. People want to like highlight something that they really liked. And then I want to make sure that we leave enough time for you to leave written comments. I'm going to sneeze. Um, but we have one more first time comment back here. Yeah, go ahead. So I would just, uh, I would support the roundabouts in our small city because I think they slow down traffic in town, which I think is more important for pedestrian and cyclist safety. Um, with lights, people can just zoom right through them with the head clean lights, where every roundabout, you have to slow down to actually get through it. Um, so that would improve conditions for all pedestrians and cyclists, and I think that's uh, something important to calming the traffic in our town. Uh, also, the signals might, like you said, have more uh, capacity, uh, but if we look at our traffic patterns, it's mostly at very specific times of day. So building excess capacity for those, maybe an hour total for the whole day, um, when a roundabout would suffice for you know ninety percent of the rest of the day, would be a better solution, and also is slower for the cars. Okay, so I'm going to just go right down the row here. So we're going to start here, and then okay, yeah. Okay, uh, adaptive signal control. <clears throat> um, if you have true adaptive signal control, you're not going to be able to coordinate your traffic lights in any particular line. Because uh, in order to coordinate your traffic lights, the time between light changes has to be figured out and, uh, and programmed into the controllers. And I think adaptive signal time is kind of a step above coordinated signals. Because yeah, but if they're not coordinated, 
But they are more than coordinated. You know, they're yeah. coordinated. I had, I had a, to each Morristown, New Jersey. We had a uh, a uh, a bunch of signals in there that were controlled by master controllers, mm -hmm. and they were supposed to select a optimum uh, program from uh, about six programs with. Uh, uh, two different cycles. Mm -hmm. They never got off the ground as far as, you know, while I was there, they never they never really worked that way. They were just time to day uh, signals. But they were supposed to add time or subtract time by choosing these different uh, um, programs. Mm -hmm. Day plans or, you know, yeah, day plans. Yeah, and with the depth of signal timing, there's actually detectors installed at each signal to these monitor. These had detectors installed at each but signal. But not just in the ground. Like no, these were, these, were, these were switched to uh, visual, like TVs. Oh, cameras. Well, let's, yeah. let's keep talking about that. Yeah, because um, that, that will also solve the bicycle problem. Yeah. Okay. If you're sitting in the lane, in the uh, in the program path of this uh, camera, then the, then the bicycle the, uh, the the camera will detect you, mm -hmm. send a signal to the controller, and tell out there's somebody waiting for the for the light to change. Yeah, fair enough. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. Um, I'm against having the traffic circle at Barry and Maine, particularly. Well, first of all, we had very little discussion about pedestrians. Not that I am one, but okay. it was all about bikes and cars. But, you know, what about pedestrians? What did they think of was the picture in, I think it was in Brazil, where they're coming off a roundabout and coming down the street, and somebody was walking across the street. Now, if you're coming off a route, if, you have, if you're coming south on Main Street and want to get on the barrier, you have to go around the roundabout. Then you get on to Barry, but what about people who are trying to cross Barry Street? The cars aren't going to stop or slow down when they come off the roundabout. So I think yeah. that's a problem. Thank you. Uh, Sam, and then there. First of all, I want to uh, I say this last time, I want to thank you all for this great work that you that you're doing. Thanks. Um, and I know that it's hard because it's not an ideal solution. Um, and uh, so, and some feedback, some other feedback I want to offer is, um, I think it's crucial not to, the cars need to be able to continue to go onto state speed, from East State and also from Maine. Because all the businesses are there. And I'm sure you know that they're going to be really upset if you make that happen, and rightfully so. so and, and so I, I, I'm a cyclist, but I care about the businesses more than I care about myself as a cyclist in that situation, because if the businesses are hurting, then there's less reason for me to be riding downtown to them. Um, and then one other piece is, I have gotten into head-on collisions in two-way bike lanes. Bicyclists are very dangerous, <laughs> and they're just like drivers. They don't know what they're doing, and they're on their cell phones texting, and they're listening to their music, and they're zoned out. So please don't make a two-way bike lane. It's a very dangerous thing to have. Thank you. Uh, here and then, uh, oh, okay. And then, uh, and then I want to make sure that we uh, get to the comments. So, or the written comments, rather. Well. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, I, I think we've had a lot of different um, methods that we've seen that work. I think Main and State Street works. Um, not with the, the pedestrian crosswalk at London, but it works for everybody. And and the roundabout up at, at um, Court near the middle school, obviously nobody wanted it to go in there, but it works. We'd love one at the bottom of Bailey Avenue. Um, but you know, you learn, you live and learn. Nobody wanted the the, the four-way stop sign on L. It works. You know, they've stopped blowing up about it. It works. And so, you know, I would hate to see street light, street light, street light, all the way through because I see congestion with that. I see movement with roundabouts. 
I hear Fred and I understand that piece of the of the puzzle as far as doing a roundabout, but to me the roundabout is aesthetically pleasing, it slows traffic, it it just allows movement. Um, you know, we need to figure out how to keep the bike path in its path and the straightaway rather than jig jigsawing it around. But um, you know, you had a picture of putting a sculpture in the middle of the, the roundabout, the whole thing. What a beautiful way to enter our city. I mean, it just is so aesthetically pleasing. Um, but to look at the street light on Memorial Drive and another one at Ferry and another one at State just doesn't cut it for me. But figuring out how to get the bike path to come through and if it means infringing on the ramp, railroad path, then we need to talk to them. All right, I'm going to go with Fred and then there and then Constantinus and then Peter and then John, you get the last word. <laughs> this lady made a good comment about pedestrians and roundabouts. <clears throat> Do not stop now. Uh, even on Berry Street, we have that nice flashing yellow light. And people don't stop. What are they going to have if you got a roundabout? Nobody's stopping. That's so, yeah. Pedestrian trip safety is very important. Thank you. Yeah. I'm just excited for something. <laughs> I right and I avoid driving to town, and sometimes I avoid walking to town, and I don't ride my bike anywhere near town. So anything would be interesting, particularly at the Berry Street. I'm talking specifically about the Berry Street Main Street intersection. So yeah, thank you. Yeah. Also, from thinking from a climate perspective, I think we should try to be disincentivizing people from driving downtown. So that would be something like increasing the cost of parking or removing some parking spaces, uh, especially public transit will be becoming more robust uh, in the near future at some point, and the advent of electric bikes, uh, that should be something that should, people should do more of, so there's less cars in our downtown, so you have more people downtown and less, you know, inert hunks of metal on our, taking up valuable space on our streets. Um, so I think uh, we should be thinking in terms of more of the future, and this is one of our opportunities where we can build the future city that we want to live in in the future and not thinking about today and yesterday. Thank you. Tomorrow doesn't have to look like today. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for that comment. Um, uh, I need to adapt to climate change. Um, I want to just say roundabouts are also really hard for kids. Um, they work for adult bicyclists, kind of, but kids have a really hard time, especially if they ride behind you and then they're suddenly like surrounded by these cars coming <coughs> around. The mini roundabouts are a little easier. I've experienced them in Brussels in Belgium. The one thing though is that they're usually in spaces or in places where the speed limit is lower, like 20 miles an hour, not 25, which makes a big difference. So I don't know if you've looked at the speed limits in relationship to the traffic flow in the roundabouts. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know that you necessarily post a speed through the intersection, but well, you'd have do. to be through the whole co corridor. If people are around yeah. and these people are just 25, they're going to be doing security, and then they hit a roundabout, and they're not necessarily slowing down enough. On Berry Street, as we heard, they put in the pavement, people mm -hmm. are speeding on their road. Absolutely. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's where narrowing the travel lanes yeah. comes into yeah. and adding, you know. My but I think. If you can look at the speed limit, around the roundabout, that might be a couple of And then I had a question about the, the quick project you mentioned, of putting the protective bike path in. It would be just 15,000. It'd be great to do it. And then the trails get finished. That's the idea. See more traffic. Uh, I was wondering how it would work before there are, before there's a signal or a roundabout. Like, is that an, an issue or not? Mm -hmm. It's an issue, yeah. But do you think you could still try it out even with that? Would you, as part of the 50,000, would be putting in the crossings? That doesn't include a signal. No, but a crosswalk. Would include crosswalks? It could. Maybe with another beacon. Another yeah. RFB, or move the RFB. Flashing, flashing beacon. Are we talking at the intersection of State or Main and Ferry? Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, and I agree that you might get bike lanes today, but it's better than the bike lanes. So. 
Yes. Okay. Thank you. And John, and then we're going to um, switch gears. There are two intersections that get blocked by traffic. Sometimes it's related to the pedestrians crossing at Lincoln Street, but more than anything, it's just traffic backed up. And, and so people can't turn to go north on, on Main, they can't turn left on the lane. So that plugs mm -hmm. up the state and main intersection. Same thing happens when people are going south on Main and want to turn onto Berry Street, and that gets plugged up. Or East State. Or East State. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and it would be a place where you could, it's not perfect, but you could put, you know, keep clear uh, markings on the pavement very inexpensively right. and educate people, and I think it would make a big difference. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Well, and thank you, everyone, for sticking it out here and uh, for your comments, your thoughts. I found this very helpful. Uh, and well, we definitely want to hear from everybody. And just to reinforce things that if you did say something, to, to reinforce that, or if you didn't get a chance to say um, something or didn't want to speak in the group, that's perfectly fine. We would invite you to um, write your thoughts on a comment card in the back, or if you want to go examine um, some of the diagrams a little more closely there back there. So please take some time um, to do that. And we're also here to um, answer your further questions. So thank you again for coming out tonight.